Hello, my name is Dr. Harry Augenson, director of the Widener Observatory. I'll be your host for the night sky rundown for September, where you will find out about what's up in the sky this month. Hello, my name is Leon Mopecha and I will be your co-host. October evenings provide the ideal setting for a parade of autumn constellations. Most of the stars of spring and summer are gone, but the increasingly early nightfall allows a few of them to still be seen. The spring's orange gold Arcturus, fourth brightest star in the night sky, sets low in the west northwest around 8.45 p.m. at mid-month. And summer's reddish orange Antares, which marks the heart of Scorpius, remains visible, though quite low in the southwest throughout October. Another holdover is the summer triangle of the three bright stars, Vega, Deneb, and Altair, which is just west of overhead by 8 p.m. mid-October. All three of these stars remain up until well after midnight. By 10 or 11 p.m., the stars of autumn have the celestial stage all to themselves. High in the northeast is the easily recognizable W shape of the constellation Cassiopeia, the queen of ancient Ethiopia. The W opens up toward Polaris, the North Star. The great square of Pegasus, a box consisting of four stars, is high in the south-southeast at about the same time and is the most distinctive landmark of autumn nights. Below Pegasus, about midway up in the south, is the zodiac constellation Aquarius, the water bearer. Aquarius is the second largest constellation of the zodiac after Virgo, but its stars are relatively faint. Sitting directly under Aquarius in the south-southeast is the whitish star Fomalhaut the brightest star in the otherwise dim constellation Pisces Austrinus, the southern fish. Rising in the east is Aries, the zodiacal constellation of the ram, marked by its two brightest stars, Hamal and Sheraton. Rising in the southeast is the constellation Cetus, the whale. Cetus is the fourth largest constellation in the sky, but it contains mostly faint stars. The exceptions are Diptha, on the western side of the constellation, and Menkar on the eastern side. After having ruled the evening sky since last spring, Jupiter takes its final bow before vanishing into the evening twilight during the second week of October. At the start of the month, Jupiter is dipping below the western horizon by 7.30 p.m. or less than an hour after sunset. By mid-October, Jupiter becomes lost in the glow of dusk. It reaches conjunction with the sun on the 26th and eventually reappears at dawn in mid-November. Saturn is still well placed for viewing as night falls on October evenings. It stands low in the southwest and resembles a bright cream-colored star above and to the upper left of orange Antares. Saturn sets around 10.30 p.m. at the start of October and by around 8.30 p.m. on Halloween night. During the pre-dawn hours, Venus beams with a yellow-white brilliance in the east-northeast. It rises a few minutes before 5 a.m. in early October and at 6 a.m or only one and a half hours for sunrise on the 31st. During the closing days of 2017, Venus will vanish into the morning twilight and slowly reappear in the evening sky during early 2018. Mars has emerged from the dawn twilight, resembling a modest orange star in the east. On the morning of October 5th, Mars and Venus are in conjunction, only one half the width of the full moon apart. By mid-October, Mars is rising about half an hour before Venus and about two and a half hours before sunrise. The only other naked eye planet, Mercury, is too close to the sun to be viewed this month. Well, that's all we have for this month. For more information on the night sky, visit the Widener Observatory Stargazing website. And don't forget about the stargazing sessions at the Widener Observatory, located on the fifth floor of Kirkbride Hall. Thank you, and remember to look at the stars.